By coming to this video, I'm sure that most of you are aware of what Marantis Kubernetes Engine does, but a brief description would be Marantis Kubernetes Engine is a enterprise level container platform. It used to be Docker Enterprise Edition, but Marantis took it over. They now develop and maintain for it. And Kubernetes Engine allows you to manage and monitor Kubernetes and Docker Swarm clusters from a centralized point, that being the universal control plane. And by the end of this video, we'll have that up and running and you'll be able to access it. Like I said, by the end of the video, we'll be able to access this universal control plane. Now, I just want to transition and show a brief diagram of how we're going to achieve this. So as you can see from this diagram, each of these boxes will be a virtual machine. The first one up here will be the Launchpad VM, and this VM will contain the Launchpad CLI, which will deploy Marantis Kubernetes Engine to the other two VMs that we see in this configuration. This VM here, Marantis Master, will be the master node where the universal control plane will be deployed to. And this VM over here will be the Marantis Worker VM that will be the worker node for this configuration. Very simple configuration, not too much to it, but it will nicely show how to deploy Marantis Kubernetes Engine. Now I'm in a position to get this walk for underway. So I'm going to navigate to my other window here and from this, you can see that I have a config file for my Launchpad VM, my Master VM, and my Work VM. Each VM has already got its own set of SSH keys, and they've all each shared their SSH keys between each other so they can connect easily. I firstly need to download the Launchpad CLI. For that, we're going to navigate here and we are going to download it for Linux. So I've downloaded the Launchpad CLI and it's gone to my host machines downloads folder and I now need to copy it from my host machine downloads folder to my Launchpad VM. And I can see from my config file that my Launchpad VM exists on host 192.168.55.2. So I'm going to have to copy it from my local machine to my Launchpad VM. For that, I'll use the SCP utility. So it was downloaded to my downloads folder. I'm then going to put the user and the IP address for the Launchpad VM and also define where I want it to be stored. So we're going to keep it as the same name. 64. Enter. You can see that it was copied. So if I list the files in the current directory, we'll see that the launchpad CLI file was downloaded correctly. I'm going to make it executable and then I'm going to run the version command. So you can see this version is 1.2.0 release candidate 1. And I know that the launchpad CLI has a command called download launchpad, which will download the latest version. So that's what we're going to do first. So download launchpad, and now we're going to go launchpad version, and we can see that that version is 1.3.3. And with that being said, we are now in a position to register, initialize a configuration file, and deploy those changes to the master and worker node. So the first step will be to register. So for that, we are going to run launchpad register. It's going to ask for your name. It's going to ask for an email address and it's going to ask for a company. I've put any information in here. Agree to the license agreement and registration has been successful. Next stage is to initialize a configuration file. For that, we're going to use launchpad 
init and then we are going to save the configuration file as launchpad.yaml and this will be the default file when you use the launchpad apply command. Okay, so now we're going to make a few changes to our launchpad configuration file so that it can send those changes to the master and worker node. So for that, we're going to open up launchpad.yaml and you can do that using any editor that you wish. I'm going to use nano for this. And down here, we can see that the first host is going to be the manager going to be a type manager and that's going to map to our master VM. So for that we're going to change this to be the IP address of our master node and we can see from the configuration file here that that is 192.168.55.3. I know that the user for that particular node will be Vagrant since that's the tool that I've used in order to create the VMs and that's the default user. Same thing I need to do down here, but for the worker node, four, change this to Vagrant. And for this tutorial, that's all I'm going to do. And this will deploy Marantis Kubernetes engine to both my nodes. So output those changes to the file. And then the final step will be to apply. Now this is going to take some time, so I'll skip forward to when this is completed and see you there. Okay, so the apply command has concluded and there was no errors in the output, so we're to presume it's been successful. We can see that down here, the URL to access the UI is the same IP address as the master VM, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're going to enter the username as admin, as that's the default, and from the output of the apply command, we can see that the password was automatically generated, so we're just gonna copy that and we're going to transition back to the UI. I'm going to sign in. I'm not going to bother with the licensing at the moment as I just want to show you the UI. So we're skipping there. And we are in the UI, the universal control plane. We can see we have one manager node, our master VM, and one work node, our work VM. And the universal control plane is the centralized point for managing Kubernetes and Docker Swarm clusters. And with that, I'm going to conclude the video. So I hope you got to the same point I did. I hope you learned a few things along the way. And I'm going to pr be producing many more videos on a variety of topics. So I hope you stick around. Until next time.